Playing some Rogue Mage action. Oh, Rogue Mage Priest action uh, versus uh, Shadow Priest. Wait, so I thought Prebles and Boomkin here, Sid. Even when they tag him in, he's not playing the Boomkin. I know Sid is not happy about this well, one. Bo Boomkin must not be good. Boomkin must not be good. Buff Boomkin, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, the only thing that makes sense here. But uh, I think Charlotte Phoenix wanted to go against Windwalker Mage here. And Kawaii coming in here. They're like, mm, we lost to this with C9. That looked pretty good. Let's play it. Interesting. Let's see how it plays out. Brain Sap, Prev. Gripping Seralium back to the pillar, but now into Double Dragon's Breath. Nice punish by Jamili. They're going after Seralium. Power play gets shut down. Seralium with the Kleptomania cancel and combustion from Jamili. Good shutdown by Kawi. Initially here, it's the first time we see Prev in the tournament. Going to be showcasing on the Shadow Priest. See what he can get done. Silence available. There's the combustion from Seralium. Just Jamili shut it down here. He's not shutting it down. Korlek the target. Big pressure. Managing to recover, clutching out the Radiance into Penance, stabilizing it there. Interesting that the, the Shadow Priest Mage is actually going for the healer. This is a notoriously strong healer killing comp with that mind games from the Shadow Priest. But Brain's in a Polymorph, Prev's in a Fear. It's three on one, but Seralium is nowhere found. Brain has to be the target, but maybe they're happy to hit him. Absolutely smacking him in this stun lock, but not getting the Divine Shield. Brain holds strong with the Battlemaster Divine Toll. Nice recovery. For good recovery on both sides. Corlex mana still at full. Jamili popping that blazing barrier. Trinket from Jamili out of the way at least. So Kawi are working through those medallions. Seralium on the back foot, trying to blink into center field. Brain caught in Dragon's Breath. Jamili trying to find Polymorph. Doesn't want to get, maybe get the diminishing return. Maybe a pre-bait on a sacrifice. Jamili just casting Poly over and over. Blinking back to Corlick. Nick is now left out midfield. Seralium sets up with Rune of Power. Gets interrupted on fire. Showcasing that Frost Bolt returning to the Mage Kit. Not really going to be doing too much, though. Shifting power to reset that Combustion. Seralium getting ready here. Combustion up in 10. Yeah, well, I mean, let's see what they can do. Big go here onto Seralium. Blind onto Brain. A nice sap. Nick really setting up his team here. It will be the Blessing of Protection on Brain to free himself from that sap and allow him to get some healing rolling. Who are they going after? It looks like they want to go after Korlik once again. Potentially a little bit of damage here on Nick. Korlik just positioning so far away. And the Priest, very susceptible to being swapped to. If he doesn't have a Trinket and he doesn't have Pain Suppression, that's pretty much the only way Priest die in stuns. So you just have to be very, very careful. You have to slowly work through those cooldowns. And for Korlik, he needs to just buy as much time as he can. And he's been doing a great job of that so far, realizing he's really the only target they're trying to go after. So he's playing it very safe with his positioning. And so far, Kawhi, outside of that initial setup, really hasn't been able to get too much oh. going. Oh, here we go. This is the big setup. Onto the Priest right there. He gets the Pain Suppression. Next time that happens, that could be the Trinket and then KO. Right now, actually, they might force the Trinket just with crowd control. Uh, me, myself, have played this matchup many times, and I've seen my Priest go down 100-0 in just a matter of a second. And Seralium right now is the one going down. They get the Mind Games. They get the Smoke Bomb there. Seralium forced into the Ice Block. But look at Korlik right now. There we go. He's taking so much damage. That actually doesn't need to use his Trinket. The Radiance there must have been a fat crit as well as that Battle Master keeping him alive in that situation but nick now once again exposed here in the midfield terralium might be looking for some crowd control brain is on that same pillar as corlick but terralium does not uh, he's just running right now trying to avoid the setup jamili going for the polymorph and prev now might get feared he actually pre-fades right there corlick now getting ready to fear the master spell cast here instead and brain right there is going to trinket and use that sacrifice and nick has his blind up in 10 seconds that might be the divine shield of brain and this is looking pretty Pretty good for both teams so far. Now Corlick getting swapped to trinketing out of that one, and he has basically no mana left. Next setup could easily close out the game here for Kawaii, but likewise for Charlotte Phoenix, if they get a good master spell on that bubble, they can definitely take somebody down. All right, let's see if they can get the setup. Seralium stunned out in midfield. Corlick laying waste with that mind games penance combo, big damage. Brain breaks out, clutches one heal before that blind and tops Seralium off. Clutch heal from Brain. Korlik repositioning with Door of Shadows. Doesn't want any business with Seralium. He's almost out of mana. The entire team will get withered away from that Shadow Priest pressure. Jamili has to cauterize into the block. No Master Spell attempt here. Prev just needs to maximize that damage, and it should be lights out. This Priest has no mana left. One Dark Archangel left in the tank to go for a kill. They need to one-hit KO somebody. They're going after Brain. 
but they don't have enough damage, I think, to take them out here through the Divine Protection. They're desperately trying to, but shut down. Holy Shock, Divine Favor, immediate recovery, and now Charlotte Phoenix retreat to the pillar. They are all cowering in fear as Brain leads the charge. Corlick gets smacked down in the Hammer of Justice. Meteor crashes in. Nick is at half health. Jamili stalls with the Dragon's Breath, but Prev follows up with a fear across the entire team. Jamili is isolated and absolutely destroyed. They proc the Wild Seed. They absolutely crush it. Beautiful play by Kawi. Nice read on the composition and a great showcase for Prevy. Yeah, I mean, it was just really nice to see. I mean, this is the first time in a long time. I don't remember the last time we saw Kawhi actually bring in a different composition. And I think bringing in that Shadow Freeze, especially Prevy. I mean, I, I thought he only played the, the Moonkin. So really having a good showcase there on that Shadow Freeze gives him a lot of composition options right now. And this team really is looking like a solid contender. And uh, they're able to play game number one against the Charlotte Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. If you remember their performance last year as well, when they were a team on this roster, they were a little bit, you know, uh, of an underdog going into this, but they finished that season in BFA super strong. And now they're showing up once again, showing that they are a strong team. They deserve to be in this spot, winning game number one against Charlotte Phoenix here. Here is the replay as well from this first game. Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, Jamili, no Ice Block, Korlik, no Trinket. Both juicy targets. They choose to go for the CC line of play here. And this guy actually looked a little bit scuffed here. They went for the Meteor onto Korlik, and they went for the Hammer of Justice on the Korlik. So it looked like they wanted to kill Korlik, but they quickly realized, hey, we're not going to have enough damage to take him down here. Let's follow up with the Fear. They get it, and they have the damage to back it up as well, taking down Jamili, taking down Nick. And also, Nick was playing the Seed uh, right there on his uh, Night Fairy Rogues. So uh, a little bit different there from Peekaboo uh, with that Soulbind. Hmm. Yeah, we're seeing Mage Shadow Priest also a lot over the last couple of days with the Europeans and the North Americans as well. Pretty solid composition. Do we feel like this is going to be something that they want to continue to play throughout the rest of this uh, series, Super Tease? Uh, I'm wondering if it will be a blind lock for them. I'm thinking what threat does Charlotte Phoenix have for... Shadow Priest, they could play Windwalker Mage, but that was tight even between the last series we saw. It, what is the clear answer? I mean, Warrior Rhett was really disruptive, but do I think of Warrior Rhett when I think of Charlotte Phoenix? Maybe not really. So <laughs> they could mirror too. Jamili can go on Shadow Priest if they want to. Maybe potentially? Nah, I don't think it's an option. Sorry, no, they burn on their team. They can't mirror. A Warlock comp? Would a Warlock comp do good into God comp? I feel like Warlocks just aren't an option with the power of Holy Paladins at the moment. I would have historically said play an Affliction Warlock comp in a Shadow Priest Mage, just Rotten Wither, stay back and block all their attacks until they die, but Paladin makes them pretty bulletproof to that with Shadow Resistance Aura. I don't, I don't know, maybe Rogue Mage Paladin? Maybe just get the Priest out of there? That was clearly the reason why they were losing. If they had a Paladin, that game would have lasted a lot longer. So maybe Rogue Mage Paladin we see from them. Hook Point is going to be a small map. Great Paladin killing map. So I think it is likely they'll stay with Rogue Mage if Kawi stays the same. Uh, or maybe potentially mirror them with Windwalker Mage if that's the blind lock for Kawi here. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see shortly here. Charlotte Phoenix locking in hook point here. This is the last series of the day, guys. Loser of this game here. This series knocked out of the tournament here as we are in the lower bracket here. So it will be the end of whichever team doesn't come out on top in this series. Kawhi, 30 seconds left to choose their composition. Locking in Fire Mage, Shadow Priest, Charlotte Phoenix now to respond to this one. How do we feel about this choice here from Kawhi and the hook point map, Ben Ruki? I, I think Kawhi is just going to ride this composition the entire time until Charlotte Phoenix comes up with an answer. Uh, I, I think it's just a really, really well-rounded composition. The Fire Mage Holy Paladin is basically a great starting point for any good composition, and then you can bring in uh, lots of different things, the Elemental Shaman, the Shadow Priest, the Warrior, Windwalker Rogue, kind of whatever you want. Uh, but the Shadow Priest is really solid, lots of instant crowd control, lots of burst damage, lots of utility. So really strong, uh, especially, I guess, here against the Rogue Mage Priest. You just have so many cooldowns you can rotate through, so much crowd control, and it looked really good for them in game number one. Charlotte Phoenix, I would be really surprised if they locked in the Rogue Mage Priest once again, um, but maybe on the smaller map, they're going to have a bit of a strategy change. Uh, we could actually see them. What? Never mind. <laughs> Not surprised to see this, but 
I was going to say, they do play Rhett Warrior. I, I know they do. Uh, Jamili has been playing Rhett Paladin. Nick, obviously phenomenal at all melee. So that could have been an option for them, but they're not going to go for that line of thinking. And it is going to be that Shadow Priest uh, Mage Paladin. And what's interesting about this composition is we saw Method in Europe utilize this in their upper bracket win. They got them into the upper bracket finals. We saw Cloud9 play this composition. Now we're seeing Kawhi play this composition. And it wasn't it wasn't one of those comps that everyone was talking about. It was more, oh, the Windwalker Mage, you know, the Rhett Warrior. Uh, but Shadow Priest Mage seems to be really rising up here in these tournaments. Yeah, you're totally right, Ben. Excited to see how they utilize this composition in this next game <laughs> on hook point here. What what did I do? I'm just saying. No, I just Boomkin super teased. I heard a mumble buff Boomkin. Yeah, Moonkin has a 100% <laughs> loss rate. Nobody picks it. Most complained about. Literally no hey, one Hey, got it. picked more than Arcane Mage, bro. You don't hear me complaining here. You got fire, <laughs> though. What am I supposed to do yeah. as Boomkin? Play Resto Druid? Oh, we saw some ferals. We saw a feral lock yeah, laser they, earlier today. Oh, we saw yeah, I'm sure all the ferals were having well. all the ferals were having a great time too. Yeah, <laughs> we saw yeah. some ferals get destroyed yesterday as well in Europe. Uh, actually, I wanted to see a paladin uh, from Korlik. Like, I think I wonder why they're picking the priest over the paladin. I mean, they, they yeah. get more offense, they get more dispels, they get you know mind games and all of that. But uh, I feel like you're putting yourself at a timer when you can just have a paladin and just make 10 mistakes and like you still have a pretty good option and like winning later. All right, game number two on hook point. Kawhi already up 1-0 versus Charlotte Phoenix. Is Charlotte Phoenix gonna be able to figure it out with this new composition here? Or is Kawhi gonna bring themselves to match point? Huh? I, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, this smaller map could backfire. It, it seemed like early on in the game, Kawhi, they wanted to go after Korlek and they can do that easier on this map, so. Charlotte Phoenix, curious what their line of thinking was on this map, because it seemed like the big map actually helped them survive for a long period of time, but maybe they're just trying to really push the pace here. Jamili gets taken out of his invisibility. Nicely done there by Seralium. Now into a sap, um, and we'll see. Nick starts off a little bit of crowd control. How do they want to open up in this match? Likely trying to draw, get them to drop combat so Nick can actually go get a sap and they can have an opener. Uh, but we'll see where this one goes. Uh, a bit of a slow start here for the Charlotte Phoenix. Yeah, Nick, still uh, kind of just chilling right now, waiting for an opening. And they're spam dispelling each other, just keeping that combat forever. So Nick is going to have to go with a stun. There we go. Kidney shot. Prev, look at that. Beautiful pre-fade. And Jamili actually blinks out of the fear. I'm pretty sure right there. Silence too late. So they actually do get the opener here. Pretty decent situation. I do believe Seralium had to use his trinket right there as well to break out of the stun lock. So pretty decent stuff here so far for Charlotte Phoenix. But now it's Seralium's time to go hard. Jamili gets chunked by the combustion right there actually does manage to dispel it uh, with that klepto and that cancel but that is going to be jamili's uh, trinket as well right there so both mages trading evenly so far which is bad for the rogue mage priest since they're the ones on the timer now another sheep here onto brain gets mass dispels by prev into the mind control onto jamili complete shutdown by the shadow priest yep total shutdown prevy showcasing why they picked him up as a fourth definitely key to their victory in game one, potentially game number two as well. This is a lower bracket round, so elimination. Charlotte Phoenix will be out of the tournament if they lose two more games. They cannot afford to, but that Disciplined Priest is on a clock with that mana bar being its main weakness. It's going to be burned down quite rapidly, especially if this damage doesn't stop. Previ is just laying in. Nick and Jamilia constantly bouncing from 50% to 100%, costing Korlik a ton of mana on those radiances. Jamili's trying to blink back, but Nick gets intercepted, caught out in midfield, and he has to train Trinket, Cloak of Shadows, prior to the combustion. This is a scary moment for Charlotte Phoenix as they are pinned at the pillar and Prev is pushing towards them. Seralium looks to reset combustion, now available. Big opportunity here. Nick needs to be ready. He stuns up Brain. He's trying to get aggressive here. Jamili blinks in, not able to find a polymorph. Psychic Scream on Core, like this could be it. Seralium has combustion, but he gets stunned up. Nick is trying to stall Seralium as long as possible here. Uh, but it could just be it. Korlik, how are you going to recover? Faint. Is it going to be enough? Nick trying to get picked up by the penance. Looks like it's going to be enough from Korlik. Jamili Polymorph Sprain. Korlik in position to fear. Doesn't look like it's available. He doesn't want to go for it. Instead, swap to Brain. Double fear on the DPS. Nice setup onto the pallet and beautiful punish. Divine Shield. Master yes, Spell. Man. All or nothing to take out Brain. They get denied on the kill, but definitely it was close. If they can keep pulling this off, they may be able to find victory, but they've only got 40% mana remaining to do so. 
I mean, that really is the challenge, right? They have to work through those cooldowns, and they are on a limited time. Corlick right now into a silence. Who are they going after? And it looks like Jamili in a good position. Nick in a good position as well. Seralium getting attacked just a little bit as Jamili finds some crowd control on Brain into a Sap, into a Polymorph. But it looks like the team of the Charlotte Phoenix, they are going to be retreating just a little bit here, trying to set up just once again. If Corlick can sit down for a drink, that would be an abs I mean, that would be absolutely ideal. But on the smaller map, I don't think that's going to happen. So really is going to be up to Charlotte Phoenix to close out this game relatively soon as they are on a time limit, about a minute and a half away from damping Seralium and Jamili, both just resetting their combustion right now, spamming out those fireballs. We'll have to see who decides to do a go first. Jamili actually using a shimmer, pushing in, gets the polymorph on Prev. Is there any crowd control on Brain? Jamili goes for the dragon's rush sheep. Can he get it? Can he actually get the sheep? He finds it, but at the same time, Nick is the one that's in trouble and a beautiful master spell comes in. Prev turns that situation on its head, and unfortunately for Charlotte Phoenix, they get denied. And there's still some answers here for Brain. He's really the only exposed target right now for Kawaii. And Brain right now is actually in Jamili's and Nick's face. You can tell Nick and Jamili are kind of trying to set up onto him. They got a sheep here onto Prev. They might need uh, to sheep Seralium here. But look at that. The counter go being launched right now. They're going to go after Seralium, actually. Big damage coming in. Jamili looking for the Dragon's Breath here, potentially, but he gets silenced. He's not going to be able to lock down Brain right there. And now Jamili on the back foot. Kornik, I think he's sitting down for a drink there, but he gets stopped because of that damage onto Nick. Nick has his Cloak of Shadows to work with. Jamelia getting Counterspelled here, looking for some Fireballs, looking to get that big Combustion one pop soon. They have it in the bank, but so does uh, Kawaii. They have their Combustion coming up in a minute, and they have all of the answers they need for the enemy Combustion. Door dash in from Kornik here. And the Door of Shadows goes through and he gets feared on it actually by Korlik and now Seralium again in a stun lock here. Brain doesn't get Dragon's Breath right there and it reacts with the Hammer of Justice. Nice dispel from Korlik but once again the okay. mana's not looking good. Nick taking huge damage and that's going to be the Radiance eating up even more mana there from Korlik. All right, let's see how much longer Charlotte Phoenix can stay in this one a minute until Divine Shield is available. Void Shift still in option. Not much time left. Previ stunned up. Seralium getting swapped to Jamili. Blinks in, looking for Dragon's Breath. Polymorph needs to stop. Mass Dispel. Prev gets interrupted. Polymorph secured. Seralium three versus one. Oh no, the Mass Dispel did ultimately slip through. Is a half Polymorph going to be enough? Jamili Vulpin shapeshifts back to his team trying to recover. The assault is over. They now need to play defense. Bunkered down by the fences of hook point. Prev polymorphed up, trying to stall. Seralium pushing in on top of the entire team of Charlotte Phoenix. Looking to try and close game number two out with massive pressure. This void form from Prev getting huge value. Look at this damage coming out from Kawi. Karlik has zero mana remaining. They're desperate. They drop smoke bomb. It's a do or die situation. It's looking more like die than do. Seralium down at 10%. Can they pull off a mirror? Miracle. Jamili just wrapped around the corner with this blazing barrier trying to stay alive. Brain in a blind, but he's sitting comfortably. He doesn't even have to trink in a blind. That's so dire. A full sap. If he sits a full blind sap and Jamili actually dies, cauterized. One more radiant slips through for Korlik, connecting a penance. They polymorph Prev. They stall, 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 stall. But where is the go? You got to get through a cot. You got to get through a medallion. You got to get through a void swap. You got to get through a divine shield. You got to get through a sacrifice. You got to get through mirror images. You got to get through basically the entire universe with no gas left in the tank for your spaceship. This is nothing short of a miracle if Charlotte Phoenix pull this off. Uh, I mean, at this point, it is not looking good. There's so many cooldowns left on the side of Kawhi. Charlotte Phoenix, no gas left in the tank. Korlik actually sitting down. Is he getting a drink? Is he actually going to be able to drink? They're letting him yeah. drink. He gets a little bit of mana there. Not too bad. And Nick comes back. Korlik able to recover about 15% of his mana, 15 to 20% of his mana. Nick now caught into a stun. They're trying to take him down. No Cloak of Shadows. He could easily fall. Pain suppression. The last thing keeping him alive. And Korlik burning through that last little bit of mana. He was just able to recover. But they're actually going after Seralium. Cauterize and Block are available. Big Triune Shield. Are you going to prevent that death? Nick trying to line of sight, but still no Cloak of Shadows for another two minutes. Means Nick is super susceptible to getting swapped to. Any crowd control on Korlik with a clean setup on Nick. Nick might just outright die to damage. Silence on Korlik, and Nick is looking like he is seed. going to fall. There's a seed. Can they take that seed the down? Barrier, the seed. The barrier comes in. Rapture Rapture power shield the seed. Well. Nick might actually be able to live. Looks like he is going to be able to. Cheating death. 
with that pod tender and now able to potentially get a restealth. Why? Obviously can't believe it, but they're still in a great situation. So many cooldowns to work with. They just need to refocus up and try to do that again. Yeah, and Nick right now still very low, no cloak of shadows, but he has to get aggressive. Rain right now in a stun lock, but the stun ends. Korlik in a sheep, no mana left. Nick, Hammer of Justice, gonna be uh, getting the spell right there by Korlik, but Jameli dropping super low. Nick dropping <laughs> super low. Five seconds left on that cloak of shadows. He's in stealth with that absorb conduit. Jameli in the ice block right now. Korlik in a ring of frost. Now he has the cloak of shadows. Immediately pulls the trigger, blinds up. Uh, no way! Right no there. way! No and way! And damage onto Pratt. They might no. actually kill him. He gets the trinket doesn't use the void shift though does survive with that bubble sacrifice big overlap there but i'm not sure how much is gonna matter they need one more setup on the side of charlotte phoenix and they could potentially close this one out this is unbelievable can they pull this off can they actually pull this off nick is going after prev trying to take him out here I don't know if they've got enough damage to do it. Jamili blinks in on a sliver of health to take down the Shadow Priest. Fading at 50% health. Sir Allium's interrupt. Brain is poly. Can they actually do it? Can Charlotte Phoenix take game two? Prev holding on. Casting Shadow Men's his healer. Dragon's Breath. Nick now getting it turned around on him, though. He goes for the Shadowy Duel just to stay alive. Only one player of the team can attack Nick at this moment in time. Meteor getting dropped here. Corlick stacks up for it. Rapture, powered shields. No wild seed number two to save Nick here. He's at 10%. Corlick's working with absolutely nothing, trying to buy every single opportunity that he can for his team. They go for the cold blood, massive hit oh, over on the Prev. They did it. They actually no pulled it off. They actually pulled it off. They just traveled across the universe what? on zero gas. <laughs> that was so insane. <laughs> Charlotte Phoenix. Ah, dude, I cannot believe that that just happened. Nick goes down. They keep the pod tender seat alive. They manage to survive and dance with death for a good minute and just consistently get their setups. Don't give up and uh, manage to pull out a victory. Charlotte Phoenix tie up the series. Absolutely. That was an unbelievable game. Yeah, another super close one, just like we saw in that last series. But like you said, Venriki, they are tied up now in this best of side, best of five series. Charlotte Phoenix winning that last one, putting Kawhi a little bit on the back foot here. Now they're going to be having to choose their map, and then Charlotte Phoenix is going to have to blind lock in a composition here. And my question is to you, Super Tees, do you think that 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 strategy is going to work, and they're going to try and do that once again going into game number three? Not on a big map, I don't think. Uh, they they got a tough time here because they still need to worry about Windwalker Mage. So they need a comp that's good on a big map into Shadow Priest Mage, and they need a comp that's good into Windwalker Mage. So, I mean, that's tough. This is unbelievable mm -hmm. in the final moment. So if Previ didn't Trinket earlier, he could have used Trinket Void Shift, I believe, on yep. crowd control coming forward. So it was a mistake on their part overlapping that. He could Trinket Swap right here. It still would have been pretty close because he smoke bombed them. Maybe he wouldn't have been able to because of the smoke bomb. Might have just been game over regardless. I don't understand how Korlik managed that drink that he got. I mean, it was like the smallest amount of mana, but <laughs> I mean, every little bit counts, I guess. I feel like Korlik should just play Paladin. Why would Paladin? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> like, <laughs> why do you want to do that to yourself? <laughs> you, I have can play a priest and run Paladin? out of mana. Yeah, Korlik's amazing his at Paladin. Paladin, Paladin. was like his first Paladin, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking like, you're going to play the Priest that runs out of mana when you could play the Paladin that doesn't run out of mana. This is kind of weird then. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, they're confusing us, but Charlotte Phoenix locking in their composition. Looks like we are going to be going to Dalaran Sewers. These guys on the desk next to me want to see Korlik lock in that Paladin, but uh, I mean, you know, things are looking up for them either way as they were able to tie up that series and I, I these just these last couple of series here I, if we include that last game Venriki have just been so so close like I, I feel like the North American region in particular is just super evenly matched with all the teams that made it into the broadcast today yeah I, I would tend to agree with a statement like that right now it just feels like in North America the top five maybe top six teams top five top six teams are very evenly matched and when they go into a series you really don't know who is going to win it was kind of like that in battle for azeroth and now in shadowlands it especially feels like that right now as it is so early on these teams still trying to figure it out but very evenly matched there's a lot of uh top contenders in north america right now is incredibly competitive uh these two teams 
doing an absolutely incredible job. We're going to Dalaran Sewers, so a nice small map. Charlotte Phoenix just confidently locking in the Sub Rogue. Fire Mage Priest, once again, playing RMP. Why? Playing the exact same composition, and you can't really blame them. I mean, that had to be an incredibly frustrating loss. When you bat when you have such a close game and then you get the seed and the seed resurrects and then you lose, that uh, speaking from experience, that's probably one of the worst feelings in the game. So you can, I could understand Seralium just instantly AFKing out of the game before Prevy even went down. It was the fastest AFK I've ever seen. Um, but I think if they just kind of shake that one off, they refocus up, they can definitely still win this series. But Charlotte Phoenix is not making it easy for them. No, they certainly aren't. And, you know, like you're saying, Venruki, it's really moments like these on the side of Kauai where they have those frustrating losses that really counts. They have to get together as a team, keep focused, keep their eyes on the prize. This is the lower bracket. Nobody wants to get knocked out of the tournament this early on in these cups. They all want to get to that circuit series. So Kauai locking in um, Fire Mage and Shadow Priest once again. Uh, Super Tease, are you disappointed we're not seeing him bring out that balance druid, though? trying to think how bad would it be boomkin into rogue mage i feel like it's not even that bad right i guess they're if corlick plays gnome <laughs> priest you get really tilted when there's gnomes because they can use escape artist and get out of your roots and you want to combo those with solar beam so i mean you could just shadow priest silence and then it can't be removed by something like that so i, I think shadow priest is more consistent here mm -hmm. uh, than boomkin would be but also buff boomkin all right, well, game number two tied up. Game number three, Kawhi versus Charlotte Phoenix, one-to-one. -one. All right, let's see how this one goes. Uh, I mean, Korlik somehow, in complete defiance, kept his team alive for such a long time. There's one crucial moment where he's able to sit down, recover 20% of his mana, and that was the most important part of the entire match for them. So we'll see what Charlotte Phoenix decides to open on. They're kind of be able to kind of dictate this opener cheap shot on Previ into a full polymorph they're actually just going after brain immediate kleptomania spell steal brain can he hold on a little bit more damage does come in brain getting low he's gonna greet it though doesn't use the trinket does not use the divine shield good peels there by seralium allows brain to hold on to that cooldown now they're trying to reverse the pressure on nick yeah, and we're going to see now this big setup here coming out. Seralium actually dropping kind of low, though, before that setup comes out. Jamili takes the combustion right, right there of Seralium, I do believe, and then they stun him up with it. Actually, doesn't even cancel it right there. Brain now getting gripped one millimeter to make that Ring of Frost miss there. Nice play by Prev, but now Brain getting kidney shot. They're going to keep the chain going here. Seralium with the Night's Fade blink there. Gets feared on it. He has one more charge. He's going to blink back to the pillar now. Master Spell being casted out by Prev. Gets cross-kicked by Nick. Brain still in crowd control, sapped off, and there we go. Blessing of protection, plus that blessing of sacrifice coming out from Brain, which means he cannot use those for himself either. He does have his trinket though, if he does get swapped to, so uh, a nice victory there for Charlotte Phoenix, but uh, no real kill windows just yet. Nick also used his trinket, as well as Jamili's trinket in that exchange. All right, let's see if they can get a setup with this. They're in a good position so far, triple crowd control. Charlotte Phoenix getting aggressive. Wondering why they locked Dalaran sewers if they were going to set up a Shadow Priest mage. It seems really odd. Almost kind of like a throwaway on the swing match. A good opportunity for Charlotte Phoenix in this game here. Can they close it out? Pre-barrier by Korlik, anticipating an attack here. It denies the swap to himself. Nick goes for a re-stealth, as rogues notoriously do. Not able to find it, though. Seralium in the back on the staircase. Frost Nova trying to avoid Nick, but Nick Shadow steps in. Triple stun lock. Beautiful setup here by Charlotte Phoenix. If they get a master spell on the ice block, it could be game over. Master spell from Korlik from downtown. Brain pops the Avenging Wrath. He's out of crowd control. He should top Seralium off, but no, he gets Polymorph full duration. If Nick connects, this could be it for Seralium. Brain trinkets out, but no cooldown to combo with it. Avenging Wrath enough to top. Seralium's okay, but I feel like if you're Charlotte Phoenix, you're pretty happy about this. Nick pre-faints the stun. Cloak of Shadows has to trade for Combustion, though. It's more than a fair trade as long as Nick can escape. They swap to Korlik with the remainder of the Combustion, trying to pull a Pain Suppression, but Radiance denies it. Charlotte Phoenix survived the swap. 
It cost them a medallion on Corlick. It cost a Cloak of Shadows, but they need to get aggressive while Surround's Combustion's on cooldown. There's no Ice Block to get through anymore. Prev grips Seralium back to the pillar next to Brain, but Jamili blinks in. Dragon's Wrist Brain, but Prev's Shadow Men's appear to be enough for Seralium so far. Nick looking to reconnect. Stuns Prev. Big damage blasting through. Eight seconds left on that sacrifice. Brain stunned up. Divine Shield's out. Connecting big heals with that Blazing Barrier, but Charlotte Phoenix looked good in Game 3. Well, they certainly do a lot of pressure on this map, and it makes you kind of think why Kawhi chose it, um, but they're just so susceptible to getting feared by Korlek in this match. Nick right now paints suppression on him, just trying to avoid the go. We'll see if they can get any more crowd control on the brain, and it looks like they are just going to be swapping to him. He's got no Divine Shield, he's got no Trinket, but of course Prev, he does have the life uh, swap if he, if he needs to use it. Doesn't look like he's going to have to. Power Infusion now gets ripped off. They're going after Nick. He's got no Cloak of Shadows. He needs to be very careful. Can he actually survive? Smoke Bomb See? drops. The Pod Tender drops down once again. Can they take it down? Can they get the he healing Rapture on Power it? Shield oh, the no. Oh, the no shield's way. coming in over and over. Is Nick going to survive again? No There's way. There's no way. Kawhi, please just calm down. Relax. It's going to be okay. They just need to focus <laughs> up and do that one more time. How incredibly tilting that must be for them. Nick managed to nice survive. Way. They're actually going after Brain. Are they oh. going to take him down? Oh, they're going to take no him down. There's no way. He's, He's so close. 10% health, 50% health. He gets a big heal on himself, but this is unrelenting from Jamili. Big combustion damage, but Brain manages to hold on. What a close call. And you can just tell the, uh, all the members of Kawhi right now, they're just getting flashbacks. But Nick, oh. going to get destroyed in that final setup right there. Did have his Cloak of Shadows, but he was stun locked with no trinket. Clean setup there by Kawhi. You can tell they had enough. They're not losing to another egg, getting saved here. <laughs> and uh, they managed to uh, take that one. But my goodness, that was so close on Brain there as well. They got the mind games off there in the end. I really thought he was just going to go down, but... Uh, he manages to survive with that trinket, and uh, yeah, I guess the priest is uh, like okay, I guess on small maps, yeah, better than we thought for sure. Man, uh, and what a comeback by Kawhi, two to one now. They had came back from that frustrating game number three, uh, or that, that frustrating game with the seed, like you guys were saying, and they came back, held their composure, and they are turning it around in their favor here. And what an incredible fight they are putting on. Here's that replay as well on game number three. Yeah, so this was the close call right there. The trinket, battle master, like the mind games came out, everything. They stun lock prep so he couldn't swap as well. That was insanely close. And Nick actually like stepped to like a little corner, like downstairs and then smoke bombed himself before the seed proc uh, earlier to actually survive to this point. But if Nick somehow could have read that situation and pre-cloaked that go, there's actually a real possibility that they win this game still. Because if you look at the cooldowns, uh, there wasn't much left uh, on the side of Kawhi there. So uh, that seed definitely uh, showing how good it can be sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, indeed. And now Charlotte Phoenix losing that last game here will be choosing their next map choice here. And just given how these last three games have gone, Super Z's, I feel like this is one that could protect, like pretty easily go to a game number five, which is how evenly matched these two teams are and all the trade-offs that we're seeing in these actual games. Yeah, uh, I feel like the Shadow Priest Mage, if they play well, it seems like they have a lot of outs um, for the all-ins. Um, I'm wondering if... Oh, there's never a world where we see... I'm wondering how many people are going to start picking up Night Fae even just to sacrifice like a main Covenant ability just to get Pod Tender to survive and all in. But if Brain goes Night Fae, you lose a lot on that Divine Toll. I feel like it's unlikely. One thing that we haven't been talking about is that you don't actually have all of the Soulbind unlocked because the Tournament Realm is mirroring the live servers. So you don't get to go all the way to the deepest parts of the Soulbind trees. And there's a lot of like anti-rogue, anti-melee uh, Soulbinds with things like Mechanicos, where if you dip below 35% health, you AOE stun everything around you. You could just totally stop people from killing you uh, with something like that, which is going to help Paladin survive even more moving into the future. Um, and, and this is things that I'm wondering <laughs> might change the game as they're unlocked. I, I'm, I don't know what week we have to get at before that's unlocked on live. Um, I think it's it, in two weeks. It's not. Is it in week. two weeks? Uh, it's three Mechanicos weeks. is unlocked. It's thirty, right? I think thirty. It might be three weeks, actually. Not. No, it's two weeks. Yeah. 
The robot chickens we're, are coming. We're, we're at 24, right? So you get three yeah, next week and then you get three every okay, Yeah, two weeks. Yep, you're right. Two weeks. <laughs> I'm, I'm just way behind, so honestly, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. I haven't been keeping up with that very well. I pretty much do Torgas uh, barely, and then that's about all I've been keeping up with. But Kawhi locking in their composition, Black Rue Cold will be our map here. One minute left on the board for Charlotte Phoenix to choose their composition. But, you know, speaking of sort of utilizing those Covenant abilities and being able to experiment around, these players are on a tournament realm. If that's something you yourself are interested in, you guys can sign up as well. There's no rating requirement all you need is two or three of your buddies to sign up and have an eligible account to participate exclamation sign up in the chat if you want more information on that and you could have a chance to compete against these guys yourself charlotte phoenix lock in fire mage nick on that row corlick on that disc priest here and, and yeah once again i mean you guys have mentioned it before corlick still choosing to go with that disc priest i really wonder what's behind that decision as well as they they continue to to lock that in as a healing spec well, I, I think the big thing for the Discipline Priest is although you put yourself on a timer because your mana is not as efficient as the Paladin, uh, the, the nice thing is um, you have a lot more crowd control. So you can actually push in, you can get multiple fears on people, and then you can assist in taking someone down with the Mind Games. And that is particularly useful in taking down a Mage. If you get a Mind Games before Cauterize triggers, Cauterize just kills you. So. Uh, instead of healing you up, you actually just completely die and it negates the, the effect completely. So that could really help in them pushing over Seralium. The extra offensive Dispel is nice for getting Triune off as well, Blessing Protections and Freedom. So I don't mind that Charlotte Phoenix is doing it. It feels risky because you can lose on mana, but at the same time, I think this is just one of those matchups where they need to push the pace and the Priest is going to help them do that a little bit more. All right, well, we'll see if that holds true. Game number four here, Kawhi versus Charlotte Phoenix. Is Charlotte Phoenix going to be able to figure something out here to turn this around in their favor? Is Kawhi going to take home this victory for the last series of the day? Kawhi got Charlotte Phoenix here on match point. Uh, we've been seeing this comp throughout the entire series so far. We've been seeing some crazy resurrects with the pod tender and uh, actually some turnarounds happening. Nice, Nick gets the Shadow Step Sap there on the invisibility of Seralium. This telegraphs that Seralium might be the target here in the opener. Nick needs to try to get a Sheep Shot onto Prev and a Kidney Shot onto Brain or a Dragon's Breath onto Brain and a Sheep Shot onto Prev so he doesn't pre-fade here. Prev needs to be the first guy who gets crowd controlled. You know, let's see what Nick decides to do here. Still holding on a little bit. There you go, Sheep Shot into the Night Fade. Uh. They get the Polymorph and the Dragon's Breath there into the Ring of Frost. Beautiful set up but Jamili, you don't have enough haste right now to go for that dragon's breath ring he's gonna trinket though and get that ring of frost right there but seralium already using that alter time he's gonna be able to survive that stun lock and this opener uh not as clean as we would have hoped for there and they aren't gonna be able to force too much there instead Jamili gonna be the one trinketing aggressively there trying to set something up but uh it's not gonna amount to too much and now they're forced to just wait and reset those drs yeah and let's see if they can get something going. Seralium still with combustion in the back pocket. Jamili with no trinket could be a viable target right now for Stunlock. But in the meantime, Nick engages, stunning the whole team. No follow-up crowd control, though, onto any players. And Nick's setup gets totally shut down. Now Korlik in a polymorph. Nick could be the target. Lockdown and a stun. Huge power play by Seralium. Nick immediately respects it. Trinket, Cloak of Shadows, Vile. Heal himself back up. Wait for Korlik to get out of crowd control. Prev pushes on top of Brain and Nick, trying to use Mines here to keep combat. They blind Brain, stun Seralium, looking like they want to go after him. Huge hit of damage here. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. He gets stunned on his Soul Shape. They get the cut. They get the block. They master spell it off. That was a sick setup here by Charlotte Phoenix. Still showing signs of life. However, it was the combustion. So Jamili's going to need to get a lot of fireballs if he wants to reset that in time to pull off a victory. Prev and Brain need to get ready to use their defensive cooldowns to save Seralium when the time comes. Yeah, two minutes into the game. Both teams rotating through cooldowns. Brain going through a holy light. Let's see what is Nick going to do. Looks like he wants to get in position to actually get some crowd control out. Cheap shot on Prev, kidney shot on Seralium. Dragon's Breath Polymorph out onto Brain. Beautiful triple crowd control. And Seralium gets gripped away by Prev. Getting a little bit of help. Can he get a Shadow Mend? does manage to get one, and it looks like Kawhi will be able to survive. I don't think they used too much in that situation. Seralem does manage to hold on now. Nick getting it reversed Nick. on him, getting extremely low, 10% health, but manages to hold on. Korlik with some nice heals, but these are the setups you want to see. 
you get a stun on Nick and crowd control on Korlik. You just do that over and over. And they only have two trinkets. And if Jamili isn't peeling like crazy, it is really difficult for Nick to survive. But now Charlotte Phoenix, they're looking to get aggressive here on a Seralium. Sacrifice trades. Brain uses the Divine Shield. And both these cooldown, both these teams are running out of cooldowns and running out of time. Yeah, that was a nice setup from both sides here. Nick, no trinket, no cloak of shadows. Could get KO'd here in the next 20 seconds. Hammer of Justice oh. on the core lake. They're actually going after core lake here. Pain suppression on himself there. Prep though, still with a lot of lockdowns. Around him now as well, getting counter aggressive. Brain in a full sheep. What are you gonna do here? Prep in a full psychic stream, going for the master spell. Should be able to get it here if he needs to. And it looks like Seralium is going to be able to survive that setup here. No more crowd control. Nick does have his cloak of shadows and his trinket. So that means core lake is the best target right now for Kawaii. If they can get a Hammer of Justice silence combo onto him, that could just be lights out here for Charlotte Phoenix and eliminate them. But right now, they are trying to buy their time here. There is an opportunity as well to take down Seralium. Nick's gonna have his smoke bomb rotating back in about a minute. Nick now, he's forced to use his Cloak of Shadows very early on there. Kordic looking for the drink. Now they're going for the setup. Full sheep here onto Brain. Seralium gets stripped on his buffs there with the Kleptomania. Spell steals it back though uh, after he gets out of that stun. Mind Games gets interrupted by the fear and actually a nice counter spell there onto uh Seralium, and that is going to be the setup being completely stopped now nick needs to be on the run cordic in a full sheep no clock of shadows no trinket oh. nick how are you gonna survive the egg might be procked here nick oh. in a shadowy duel gets a fat heal oh. through the shadowy duel from that radiance and stays alive that was a clutch play by Korlik. Brain almost single-handedly taking Nick down and forcing that pod tender. Nick is still in trouble, though. Brain in a full blind. Is he going to be able to trinket this? It looks like he's going to bop himself out of the blind. Seralium taking a huge hit, blinking back to Brain's side. Nick on the run once again. Line of sighting. Prev uses Shadow Crash to keep Nick in combat. I like that usage of that Shadow Priest talent, just hitting it around the corner. Nick, though, looks like he was able to get a re-stealth. Dispelled of Dots. Waiting to find a target. Seralium popping combust here. Trying to go after Jamili. Just maxing his damage to Oom um the, the Disc Priest. I kind of like that. Just tapped Korlik on his main weakness. Uh, brain though, Sunlock. They're chasing Seralium. Seralium blinks Nick in pursuit. Stuns him up. Triple crowd control. Huge hit of damage. Whoa. And that's it. KO. We're going to game five. Uh, actually, unreal. I mean, this is just such a back and forth game once again and i mean charlotte phoenix and Kawhi just seem so evenly matched in this series beautiful setup so coming in from charlotte phoenix initially you know we didn't think the rogue mage priest was necessarily the best composition but the crowd control and the setups they're just consistently nailing have been looking really good from them yeah absolutely they have been both of these teams looking super solid which is why it's not surprising that we're ending up on a game five here both of these teams tied up two to two as you can see on your screen charlotte phoenix winning that last match here we can see the match results as well and you can just see how evenly matched both of these guys are and uh do, do we feel like then that they're just gonna keep like this is really the the crazy one right i mean they they've swapped back and forth on victories throughout this entire series game number five obviously the one that is going to take them home and win this entire series here and it, it's just Kind of crazy when these teams swap back and forth when they're so evenly matched, such as these two teams. And here's that replay as well. I mean, Nick at this point just survived on 1% HP from that Shadowy Duel. And here comes Seralium now trying to just end the game with a raw damage, trying to force Korlik away from that drinking position. And there we go, Jamili getting the Ring of Frost. Seralium completely isolated away from that Shadow Priest. And the Shadow Priest did have his trinket there. I'm not sure. He had Void Shift as well. So uh, Seralium, unfortunately, a little bit out of line of sight there from his Shadow Priest. Otherwise, the Shadow Priest probably could have just trinket swapped him. Did get smoke bomb there at the end of that one though, but uh, definitely want to be in line of sight there. But uh, that's the thing, uh, Rogue Mage, they have insane burst and uh, they find that opportunity uh, after basically cheating death once again. And they take us to game five. I, I just wonder why are both teams picking small maps? I feel like, I don't know, doesn't the Shadow Priest uh, team want to go on like a bit larger map? That's what I thought too. I won't complain about this one though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, maybe yeah. both teams want to get fears. <laughs> both teams need to win off fears. We're doing it. <laughs> We're picking the smaller yeah. maps, but you, you would think that having a little bit more space, but I don't know. It is really annoying on a big map as well, or on a large map. It's really annoying for Nick to constantly be running and getting line of sight and maybe Korlik to drink more. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. 
Um, but Ruins of Lordaeron, this is this is a good pick, I think, from Kawhi because it's going to be a lot more difficult for Nick to use a pillar and actually run around and get the constant restyles uh, that we're seeing uh, him get and actually help him set up his team for these goes. Mm-hmm. Probably a little nervous, too, uh, on the side of Charlotte Phoenix here. They're locking in the blind pick. They have to choose their composition first. Both of these teams, if they wanted to, are capable of throwing in, like, kind of a wild card composition here. 30 seconds left on the board, though. Uh, and how likely it is, do you think, that they're just both of these teams are going to do what they've been doing throughout this entire series, Super Tease, and just try and make it work one last time, despite how close all of these games have been? There it is, that Fire Mage Rogue once again, Super Tease. Rogue Mage Priest has been looking better and better, I feel like. Initially, I was thinking, mm -hmm. like, this is not going to work at all. And then, like, okay, kind of, sort of, maybe. Oh, you won off seed. Is that really legit? And then that game, I was like, oh, that does work. So I, I don't blame them for going with more of the same here. This is a tough map um, for rogues to run away on. There's not a lot of places you can run and hide. So uh, it could this could end up working out really well for Kawi for that reason. They may just want to stop the rogue from restealthing. Curious to see if they mix up their targeting, as uh, it feels like Seralium uh, was the main focus in that game, just start to finish. Uh, and Charlotte Phoenix have the opportunity to mix up their targeting as Rogue Mage Priest. Maybe they go straight for Brain this game. Uh, and Kawi need to be ready for that because any of them, ex except I don't feel like Shadow Priest shouldn't be the initial target. Dispersion's too good of a trade, it's too efficient. But Paladin and Mage have very long cooldowns that you're going to get, like Divine Shield or Cauterize or Ice Block. So uh, Brain and Seralium just need to be ready. I, I feel like if Kawi mm -hmm. play a solid defense, they should be able to tap the Priest out of mana and close this out. Yeah, and as we know, Kawhi did lock in this map, Ruins of Lordaeron, and they locked in that last composition. If you guys were looking at the timer almost instantly, which I feel just goes to show this is the composition that they were going to play from the beginning. They know exactly what they're doing here, and it just kind of seems, just based off of how quickly they're moving through this draft process, Seiko, that their confidence is super high going into this. But I bet you Charlotte Phoenix is too, and really I just feel like it's any one game here going into game number five. It just yep. feels like Charlotte... No, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. I, I was just going to say, you know what's really interesting to me is that Kawhi is not locking in Windwalker Mage Paladin, so that makes me think that RMP is actually a really good matchup into that. That means the Charlotte Phoenix is probably going to have a solid answer into a lot of these teams that we do see, so things could be looking good for them, especially against a lot of these teams that are using the Windwalker Mage Paladin, but they have to get through Kawhi right now, the Shadow Priest Mage Paladin. Um, and I don't know. This is really anyone's game. Both these teams are really evenly mashed. And we're actually just going to immediately get into the game. Kidney shot on Brain. Hammer of Justice now on Nick. Seralium trying to get aggressive. The big combustion. Jamili immediately taking that off, removing that damage. But an explosive start for both these teams. Ooh, Seralium right there using his every map for himself. We get stun up back again on it. Nice alter time, though, before that stun came through. And that's going to be the trade right there. Jamili, though, did not use his combustion here, just the meteor, which means that next stun lock is going to be a big one here on Seralium. They can smoke bomb it and straight up force the ice block here, or they could just go for a big crowd control chain, try to force out some trinkets, hold on to that bomb for maybe later, try to close out the game with it and see what Nick decides to do. He's in a clean restuff right now. He's looking for Brain right here. They got a sheep onto Prev, and I think Korlik wants to fear Prev. Kidney shot onto Brain, and there it is. Kidney shot, cheap shot onto Prev, into a fear potentially, into a stun here onto Seralium. There it is. Ring of Frost, fear, combustion, and it is going to be an overlap there on the smoke bomb. Unfortunately, the trinket sacrifice from Brain traded at the exact same time as that smoke bomb. Nick wanted to try to pre-smoke the trinket and get more cooldowns. Still a good push though from the Charlotte Phoenix despite that smoke bomb. Here we go, game five, day one in North America. You couldn't have a better place for a fitting final resting place. Let's see who pulls it off here. Both teams face elimination and Corlix maintaining his mana strong here early on, two minutes in, still at above 80%. That is dangerous for Kawi overall. Combustion available, Seralium has a big power play. Nick is taking the brunt of it! Book of Shadows on 10%. Close call, but manages to stay alive, holding onto that pod tender to save himself at a later time, setting up his team. Stunning Brain, stunning Seralium. Prev pre-fades the setup to try and get a master spell. Goes for it, doesn't get it. Gets polymorphed on it. They're trying to connect on Seralium. Not able to get too much damage with the Polymorph Chain's over. They go for a Fear, Dragon's Breath on Prev. Seralium is alone, but now recovers with just one instant heal from the Paladin. Nick, line of sighting, 
Feigning some damage. They swap over to Korlek. Big power swap oh. on to Korlek. And that's it. KO. How we do it. 3-2. Unbelievable. I mean, Korlek, he still had the pain suppression. But he decides to trade out the trinket. And I did he dispel himself? I think it was yeah, a VT He dispelled yeah, so He dispelled my game. He dispelled himself. Uh, that, that's like one of those decisions that can end up really biting you. But Kawhi, with a huge swap on a Korlek, they managed to take this series and they send the Charlotte Phoenix out of this tournament. But a beautiful performance by Charlotte Phoenix, and I expect big things for them in the coming weeks. I certainly.